Welcome back, friends. You might have noticed this is not my normal studio. I am actually in LA filming a guest appearance on a History Channel program. Super excited about that. Stay tuned to the socials. I had actually planned to take this week off of YouTube until I saw something that made my jaw drop. By now, I'm sure you've seen it too. For the first time ever, the Alaska snow crab harvest has been canceled. The population of snow crabs has absolutely cratered. According to the Alaska Department of Fish and Game, an estimated 90% of the population has vanished. We are talking billions of snow crab gone. Those numbers are absolutely chilling and it is nothing short of an ecological disaster. It is the topic of this week's video. I'm KP, a marine biologist with over a decade's worth of experience working with marine mammals. Now, obviously crabs and other crustaceans are a bit outside my wheelhouse, but many of the animals that I have worked with do rely on crabs for food. These crustaceans are an important food source for animals like belugas, seals, sea otters, as you can see in this video of a pup trying to steal a crab from its mom. And it's not just marine mammals. Animals like squid, halibut, cod, they all eat crabs. And of course, so do humans. Alaska produces 60% of the seafood consumed by the US. And when asked what this means for the hardworking crab fishermen whose livelihoods depend on this harvest, the executive director of Alaska Bering Sea Crabbers simply said, second and third generation crab fishing families will go out of business. Many of these families are calling for government relief programs, similar to those that farmers get during a failed crop or a drought. And I agree, we should absolutely help out Alaskan families that rely on these fisheries. Because these are real people with medical bills, mortgages, rent. And according to the NOAA, the collapse of the snow crab population is not due to overfishing. Until recently, there had never been a shortage of crabs reported by the Pacific or Atlantic. Partly because snow crabs have an incredibly high reproductive potential. Every year, a female crab can carry up to 150,000 eggs. And the males are capable of reproducing at both the immature and mature stages of their life cycle. But it should be noted that Noah said the same thing about the Alaskan king crab. And the king crab population suffered a nearly identical crash in the 80s. A crash that to this day, they have not recovered from. In fact, this year's king crab season has also been canceled for the second year in a row. Last year, a biologist who worked with NOAA Fisheries for over 25 years filed a whistleblower complaint against them, claiming that the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association paved the way for the collapse of the king crab population by engaging in sampling bias and data falsification prompting President Biden to direct agencies to improve the integrity of their scientific work. This is potentially relevant, so we'll come back to that in a second. But for the moment, let's assume that the NOAA is correct and that the snow crab collapse is not due to overfishing. Because if that's true, then what happened to the billions of crabs that disappeared? Why hasn't the population rebounded like it has in past years? To solve this mystery, we have to take a deeper dive into the behavior and physiology of this species. Snow crab get their name because they are primarily found in the frigid northern oceans of Alaska and Siberia, where the water temperature is usually between negative one and five degrees Celsius or 30 to 41 degrees Fahrenheit. These waters once experienced significant snow ice cover during the winter months. Now, brine is actually ejected when sea ice forms, and it forces bitter cold water to pool at the ocean floor. It's something that biologists refer to as a cold pool, and it is essential to snow crabs, specifically juvenile snow crabs who feed on sea ice algae. 
This cold pool also provides sanctuary for juvenile sea crabs as it is too cold for most predators like sea otters. In recent years, sea ice has been shrinking dramatically. And as a result, that cold pool has moved further and further north. At this point, you've probably figured out where I'm taking this, the most popular hypothesis for what has happened to the snow crab population is climate change. Contrary to what this user has to say, climate change is very real and no state is warming faster than Alaska. I actually lived in Alaska for a summer when I was taking care of a rescued and rehabilitated sea otter pup named Taslina. And if you want a feel-good story about how sea otters like Taslina might just be the cutest solution to climate change, you can click on this video right up here. <laughs> that was a twofer. When I was up with Tazzy in Alaska, I got to see with my own eyes how much glacial ice has been lost. We're talking miles and miles of glacial ice that has disappeared in my lifetime. So when the sea ice shrinks and moves further north, so does the cold pool. That exposes these juvenile snow crabs to predators like sea otters. I'm sure the sea otters are very happy about this. So the snow crab have no choice but to migrate. And that's what many scientists think has happened. They believe that the snow crab population has migrated to deeper waters and further north. And it's not just crab. A study by the Environmental Protection Agency found that since 1980, pollock, snow crab, Pacific halibut have all moved northward by an average of 19 miles. And we've seen this with other species as well. As ocean temperatures rise and sea ice melts, animals like belugas and walruses have been forced from their natural habitats in search of food and shelter, which exposes them to dangers that they're not used to, like everyone's favorite wandering walrus, Freya, which I'm still pretty mad about, if I'm being honest. But that's not the end of the story. The whistleblower that I mentioned that accused the NOAA of uh, like lying about the collapse of the king crab population, according to him, the real culprit is bycatch. According to one study, bycatch of king crab increased by more than 600% in the 1980s, right before the population crash. Shrinking sea ice opened new fishing grounds for trawlers targeting sole and other flatfish that live on the sea floor. And there are many environmental activists who are claiming that this same thing is what happened with the snow crabs. And these activists have actually provided data that appears to support their claims. From vessel logs to the NOAA fisheries own stock assessments which I've posted in the descriptions below. But it should be noted that this data, while fairly convincing, isn't exactly conclusive. And as far as I'm aware, there's no real evidence that the NOAA is being dishonest in their assessment of the snow crab population. And I also don't think it's entirely fair to blame the fishing families who are losing their livelihoods, especially when they are quite literally being told that the only thing that they can do is hope and pray. Because the truth is, while it is very likely that it is a confluence of factors that has led to this incredible collapse of the snow crab population, including bycatch and predation, the root cause is climate change. As sea ice shrinks, it takes food and shelter away from many animals, including the snow crab. This exposes them to predation and potential bycatch from fisheries that aren't specifically targeting them. 
forcing them to migrate outside of their historical range. And many climate scientists are actually calling this the canary in the coal mine. The good news is there are lots of things that we can do to help fight climate change. I've talked a lot about organizations like the Alaka Alliance and Ocean Conservation Namibia, organizations who are actively restoring keystone species to their historic range, and campaigning for more responsible fishing practices. And if you know of other organizations doing good work in the fight for climate change, let me know down in the comments below. I want to check them out. Maybe I'll even highlight them in the future or host a fundraiser like we do over on my Twitch channel. Don't forget to follow me on my other social media for updates on things like the TV show that I'm filming tomorrow. And if you want to see the ridiculous video that caught the producer's eye, you can catch that right up here. Cheers. And if you want a feel-good story about how sea otters like Taslina might just be the cutest solution to climate change, you can click on this video right up here. You can click on this video right up here. I don't remember which one it is. Use one of those. And the males are capable of reproducing at both the immature and mature stat. These waters once experienced significant snow ice cover in the 